On the news, Presidency warns COVID-19 patients against self-medication as death toll nears 200. 292 stranded Nigerians return home as over 3,000 more await evacuation. And UN warns of grave COVID-19 impact on African countries. Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. Most COVID-19 deaths in Nigeria are from wealthy people who choose home-based care. This is according to the Minister of Health, Osage Ehanure. Ehanure said this during the briefing of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 in Abuja. According to the Minister, many educated, well-to-do Nigerians choose home-based care and are only washed to the hospitals after sudden complications. He advised anyone who tests positive for COVID-19 to seek medical attention and not use drugs without a doctor's prescription. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, have released a comprehensive list of COVID-19 fatalities cauterizing according to states where it was reported. The COVID-19 Situation Report 80, released on Tuesday, shows that Nigerian that Lagos has the highest death toll, followed closely by Kano State and Borno, respectively. According to the report, of the 191 COVID-19 deaths in Nigeria, 38 were recorded in Lagos. 36 in Kano, 24 in Bornu, 24 and 13 in Katsina and Sokoto states, respectively. It adds that nine deaths have been recorded in the federal capital territory of Buja, five in Bauchi, Zamfara, Kwara and Delta states, respectively, and four in Gombe, Yobe, Oyo and Ocean states. Kaduna, on the other hand, has three fatalities, while Akwai Bomb has two deaths. Nigeria has so far repatriated over 1,000 Nigerians stranded abroad due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This follows the return of 292 Nigerians stranded in Saudi Arabia. Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Onyema confirmed that the returnees arrived the country on Tuesday night through the Innamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. So far, Nigerians stranded in the U.S., U.K. and Dubai have been brought back home while about 3,000 others are awaiting evacuation. A non-governmental organization, Save the Children International, has donated personal protective equipment worth 50 million naira to the Federal Capital Development Administration, FCTA. The body says the fight to contain coronavirus is a joint battle in which the government needs the support it can gather to safeguard the health of the nation. TV360 Sunji Oye has details in this report. The personal protection equipment donated by the international organization is worth 50 million naira. Face masks, gloves, sanitizers, and washing balls and other equipments to fight the pandemic were handed over to the Federal Capital Development Authority. The organization says it is aware of the challenges faced by governments at all levels in the fight against coronavirus, and it is ready to partner with governments in the fight. Safety Children has redesigned its programs to be adaptive to the current situation. That has included continuing our life-saving measures in states where we offer water, sanitation, hygiene, and nutrition programs. We want to ensure that children, wherever they are, develop the resilience that is needed to thrive through this pandemic. And so those programs continue to run. But in line with that, we continue to work on our cash transfers and food voucher programs to ensure that our beneficiaries, wherever they are in the states that we program, are catered for during this time. The Femi Otadala Fund has put towards this donation 50 million naira. Representative of the Ministerial Committee on COVID-19 in the FCT, AGK Oji, says the FCT administration is grateful for the gesture and will ensure that the PPEs are put into full utilization. Most of the things that are here are PPEs, that is personal protection, protective equipment. Uh, most of the healthcare workers will not step into the isolation center if they don't have some of these things. And if you look at what happened in a place like um, US, even um, Italy and Spain, part of the problem that made a lot of doctors get infected, they weren't properly uh, protected. And this is going to 
go a long way to make sure that protection is complete. I'm very sure the minister will be very appreciative of your corporate uh, responsibility by bringing this to support the fight against COVID-19 in the FCT. A lot of resources have been deployed by the minister and even at the federal level to tackle this COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, a lot of people also have contributed towards this court. And we believe that by joining hands together, we're going to stem this thing right on time and then everybody will be free. And your donation today is going to go a long way because uh, apart from the, the personal protective kit you're giving, the, hand, the preventive items will also be deployed to sensitive areas like market, school, um, hospitals, and where they are needed so that people as they come out, they'll be able to take out these preventive actions to safeguard themselves. Similar gesture has been extended to the Lagos State Government by the Save the Children International. From Abuja, Tunjoye. TV 360 News. Meanwhile, the National Orientation Agency, NOA, is collaborating with the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, to check acts of impunity and corruption of some security operatives who are allegedly compromising the ban on interstate movement, and that's by collecting gratification to give access to travelers. Director General of the agency, Gaba Bari, said this in Abuja at an event where the agency explained its observations on efforts in the fight against COVID-19. NOA says it's partnering with the Antigraft body to provide toll-free numbers to enable Nigerians report such misconduct, adding that all security agencies found wanting would be made to face the full wrath of the law. ICPC also warns public officers managing COVID-19 funds donated by well-meaning Nigerians to be transparent in the management of the funds or be ready to answer questions from the agency. The present collaboration is born of the fact that several observations are being made to the effect that some security personnel are alleged to be compromising on the ban on interstate travels and the curfew by collecting gratification and allowing free passage of unauthorized persons. The present collaboration between the National Orientation Agency and the ICPC will set up surveillance to ensure that those who indulge in these acts are apprehended and appropriately brought to book. Uh, in situations like this, uh, in emergency situation, you have to, you know, buy, you know, uh, materials, buy, you know, um, relief items, I mean, for the general public and what have you. Uh, ministries like Ministry of Health, Ministry of Humanitarian uh, Services and what have you, they, they have to engage with you know, vendors outside in uh, supply and purchase of uh, uh, goods. 1.25 million workers in the hospitality industry will lose their jobs if the federal government fails to intervene and give palliatives to hospitality workers. President of the Federation of Tourism Association of Nigeria, Salah Rabo, said this in a chat at TV 360 Nigeria. Rabo said since the outbreak of COVID-19, hotels and sundry tourism businesses in Nigeria have lost hundreds of millions of naira from services cancellations and disrupted sales. In the hospitality and tourism industry in Nigeria, we have so far missed over 2.5 million jobs. And this 2.5 includes people working in the uh, hotel sector, in the travel agency, car hire, restaurants. A lot of, you know, the, the, the hospitality sector is so large because it encompasses so many, you know, uh, stakeholders. And therefore, more than half of them now, are, are at, almost all are at home. So we are hoping, we are thinking that by the time businesses even come back, most of some of these people will not come back to work because they've already lost because there's no any income you can't even pay them salary so how are you going to sustain them so more than half of that number are going to completely lose their job and this thing we're still counting because we don't even know when this COVID-19 is going to end we even suggest some, some strategies to the government that they should form like a kind of uh, 
a, 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 a team that will look into all these problems of professionals who will look into these problems that are affecting the hospitality industry and after the committee has come up with its own you know suggestions and ways forward then they should have an implementation committee which will be able to help them know how these monies or how, who needs what and when how much does he need so that together they will be able to do it in such a way that it will come up helpful to all of our members and millions of people could be pushed into extreme poverty in Africa due to the coronavirus pandemic. This is according to the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. In a statement accompanying a UN study with recommendations for the African continent, Guterres says the pandemic threatens African progress and will aggravate long-standing inequalities in heightened hunger, malnutrition and vulnerability to diseases. He added that the only way forward is global solidarity on the African continent. In recent years, Africans have done much to advance the well-being of the continent's people. Economic growth has been strong, the digital revolution has taken hold, a free trade area has been agreed. But the pandemic threatens African progress. It will aggravate long-standing inequalities and heighten hunger, malnutrition and vulnerability to disease. Already, demand for Africa's commodities, tourism and remittances are declining. The opening of the trade zone has been pushed back and millions could be pushed into extreme poverty. The virus has taken more than 2,500 African lives. Vigilance and preparedness are critical. I commend what African countries have done already together with the African Union. Most have moved rapidly to deepen regional coordination, deploy health workers and enforce quarantines, lockdowns and border closures. They're also drawing on the experience of HIV AIDS and Ebola to debunk rumors and overcome mistrust of government, security forces and health workers. I express my total solidarity with the people and governments of Africa in tackling COVID-19. You're still watching news now on TV360 Nigeria. Up next is updates on security in Nigeria and more. Do stay with us. At least five people were killed and one was injured in a Tuesday attack by bandits at Kajera and Magazawa villages in Safi LG of Zamfara State. The attackers, according to the residents, invaded the community on motorbikes and opened fire on buildings and houses with residents inside. This led to the death of five persons. Spokesperson of the Zamfara State Police Command, Mohammed Shehu, who confirmed the incident described the attack as a reprisal by bandits. He said the bandits came to retaliate the killing of two of the people who were murdered on Sunday, May 16th in one of the communities in Safi local government area. A fire outbreak has occurred at the headquarters of the Nigeria Postal Service, Nipost, in Abuja. The cause of the inferno is yet to be confirmed, but according to reports, it started at about 9 a.m. on Wednesday. It was however learned that a large number of staff of the agency were in their offices when the fire broke out. A member of staff told TV360 the fire service was able to put out the fire not long ago. President Muhammad Buhari has presided over the second virtual meeting of the Federal Executive Council. The FEC meeting held at the presidential villa in Abuja. The virtual option was adopted as part of measures to guard against the spread of COVID-19. Only ministers with memos to present needed to be physically present at the presidential villa, while others linked up from their different locations online. The AKT House of Assembly has passed a bill to give children and vulnerable persons access to basic social services and infrastructure. The lawmakers passed the Social Protection Bill 2020 at Wednesday's plenary presided over by the Speaker, Fumini Afuye. Olubumi Adeluba, chairman of the Joint Committees at the House of Assembly, said if Governor Kayode Fayemi assents to the bill, it will create social protection programs that will reduce poverty in Ikiti State. Adeluba added that the law would also enhance human capacity and capital development, ensure dignity of human life, promote social welfare, and improve food security and nutrition. 
One thing that sets apart local African fabrics is its versatility, and many creative designers are constantly putting this to the test, proving that there's nothing that can't be achieved with the African print. A Nigerian designer has taken it a notch higher by embellishing drawings with discarded pieces of fabric. Only Adekale files in this report. Marcelina Akpojoto is a trained artist who also majored in painting, but she has found a deep interest in local fabrics, popularly called Ankara. These pieces are remnants of fabrics which have undergone a cycle. They are often discarded after tailors have cut off necessary parts from the full material. Akpojoto collects these pieces from tailors and makes new sense with them in a studio rather than watch them go to waste. She got accustomed to art through her dad, who is also an artist. But the Ankara idea came to her in 2013. I was working with pastel, making portraits of my younger ones and their friends that come to visit the house. So after some time, I, I got bored with the pastel and I wanted to push myself. And some of this fabric were just lying there. My mom, some of my mom fabrics were just lying there with nothing to do. So I started making fabric jewelries with them. After some time, I was still bored. So I would, the idea just came that since I've been using pastel to create portraits, why not try use the fabric for the portrait itself? Her work often begins with a thought which she sketches and then transfers to the canvas. Afterwards, she coats and lays the fabric on the canvas with glue and paint to reveal these beautiful artworks. In my work, you're seeing team of education, team of womanhood. I also talk about um, my family's journey to the fulfillment of my great grandmother's dream. Because while she was alive, she one of her dreams was to be able to go to school, and she didn't have the she didn't have the opportunity. So I explored that um, part of my history to talk about the story of, stories of the women before me and after me. Akwajato has created about 100 works in different sizes. She says she never stopped exploring the use of local fabrics because of the joy she derives from it and the mere fact that it endears people to her work. There are fabric that we use in celebrating different locations. You see them as um, ashwebi for birthday parties, for burial ceremony, for graduation. So I think it's kind of versatile and it's a fabric that people can relate with. Art tells the story of the people and the environment. So it's only uh, right for one to also explore materials from within that environment. As easy as it may seem to get the Ankara pieces, it sometimes still feels like a huge task that can be very challenging. Convincing some tailors to um, part with the waste fabric some of them have this funny expression on their face because they don't really believe what you said you use the fabric for. So, you need, so they need a lot of convincing. And sometimes we even allow them to enter the studio to see what we use this fabric for. Since 2013, Akpojoto has done several solo and group exhibitions. She has shown off her works in South Africa and the United States. A story simply shows that art knows no boundaries with or without sophisticated materials. Only Adekunle, TV360, Nigeria. Fidelia Agunta is standing by for business and will be joining her right after this break. You're welcome back. Here's Fidelia Agunta for the latest business stories. Hello, Fidelia. Hello, Aneta. Thank you very much. The Teen Can Island Command of the Nigeria Customs Service has deployed a time-release study tool to improve its trade facilitation process. Custom Area Controller Musa Abdullahi said the TRS is a strategic tool 
that is capable of identifying bottlenecks in the trade value chain. He explained that the tool is able to determine the actual time required for the release and clearance of goods right from the time of arrival to physical release from customs control. Addressing some stakeholders in his office, Abdullahi added that the command generated a total of 117.8 billion naira between January and April 2020, despite the global pandemic. We will now shift focus to the stock market after this break. Traders at the Nigeria Stock Exchange, especially those with investments in banking and industrial goods equities, uh, have been having a field day and cashing out since the start of activities this week. With today's 1.33% boost, the All Share Index is rising by over 580 points in the past three days, which translates to a 302 billion naira in the market capitalization for it to close at 12.74 uh, trillion naira. Now, largely contributing to this bullish performance is uh, Dangote Cement right here, the NSE's most capitalized equity, and it's posting gains for the second consecutive day. The company today ended its 150 billion naira commercial paper issuance program through which it is hoping to raise 50 billion naira in additional short-term debt capital. And with this, it is not surprising that our Dangote Cement is closing today up by close to 3 naira in its share price. It was also a good day for Zenit Bank, BUA Cement and Guarantee Trust Bank, all posting gains. To the flip side, we can see that WAPCO is struggling quite a bit, dropping by 0.3 Cabo. Access sits next on the loser's charts. That's the second position, while Unity Bank and Wemmer Bank are also dropping, posting losses in covers. So that's quite small, but compared to their share prices, it's quite a big deal for investors. Let's now look at the market summary. Volume is coming in at 436.8 million, and it's valued at 5.4 billion, and they all transacted in uh, 5,195 deals. Let's now move to the foreign scene and see how the market is performing over there. Also a bullish day for them. FTSE is rising as the UK government issues bonds to garner more uh, money to the economy, to boost the economy after the coronavirus pandemic effect. The Dow is also posting gains to the effect of 1.67%, while the Nikkei is rising by 0.79%. That's it from the world of business. It's back to Veneta Felix. Thanks for the business updates, Fidelia. And now to the latest in Central Africa. The Democratic Republic of Congo has begun investigating the killings of dozens of separatists by the security forces last month. Human Rights Minister Andrew Lyde says policemen accused of looting the separatist leaders' residence were in custody and awaiting trial. The pressure group, Human Rights Watch, has accused the security forces of using excessive lethal force against the Bundu Dai Congo group, which wants to revive the ancient giant Congo kingdom. Nemoanda Nisemi, a self-styled prophet who leads the group, was arrested last month after proclaiming himself president of the Democratic Republic of Congo in what he called a divine coup. And now to news and sports. Top Nigerian athletes are appealing to the sports ministry to consider fixing a new date for the National Sports Festival in August 2020. The athletes are still hopeful of making world standard performances for Tokyo 2020 qualification. And they say any new dates beyond August will make their performances unrecognizable by the World Athletics. Only six Nigerian athletes, including Blessing Okagbiri, S.A. Brume, Toby Amusan, and David Oduduru, have earned the qualification standard so far. The National Sports Festival was initially scheduled for March 20th till April 2nd, but had to be postponed due to COVID-19. And that's it on News Now for today. Thank you for watching.